Hey, what's up? I'm A.B. Quintanilla still, and this is my lovely wife, Ricky. And you guys have been asking, oh, you're going to do the beauty pageant. <laughs> you guys have been asking for a new video. So here goes the new video. And would you? I wasn't oh, done. you're going to ask. Oh, done. you weren't done. Okay. Are you done now? Sure. Okay. So you guys have been asking for a new video. And so you're going to be silly, aren't you? Uh, and so here goes the video. It's I basically got all of a you got hyper all of a sudden. <laughs> you got what. hyped on Mountain Dew, man. Calm down. Whew. Calm down. Okay. So this video is ask AB. Ask me any question you want, and we it took, was ask any random question. We any put it on question. Facebook, Instagram, and your Twitter. And right. I have a list here of random questions from random a bunch questions. of random people. Random questions. You didn't um, make taken up. Taken from all three media sites. You didn't make them up. I didn't make them up. No. These are actual questions. And, and I was I actually was going to put like who, the person, yeah, but who had asked them. But mm -hmm. then there was a lot of questions that like four or five, six different people had asked. So I was like, I'm not gonna name off, you know, a list of ten people that asked one yeah. question. So I was like, I'm just gonna write each individual question. So if you if you if you're at so every question that I have written down mm -hmm. on here are actual questions that I took off of you guys' comments on his post. Yeah. So you'll know what your question is. You'll go, hey, I was the one. You're like, that was my question. Oh, oh. You that might get excited question. or you might not get excited. But either way, here it goes. Okay, so question number one. What's your favorite reality show? My favorite reality show, I have actually two favorite reality shows. Okay. Can I say both of them? Yeah. I like to watch The Kardashians and I like to watch... Uh, the Total Divas. Oh yeah, yeah. He I'm knows. a Nikki fan. I like I like to watch Nikki. I like the twins. <laughs> twins, Basil. Twins. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what meals did you eat when you were on your diet? What meals did I eat when yeah, I was like on my? What sort of special things did you eat differently? Basically, it, it just depends. If if you're wanting to, to drop weight like I did, uh, you just have to change your your total diet period which consists just healthy eating um you know cutting the bread out cutting sodas out you know keep your carbs to a minimum you know per day uh, that you, you can google uh for your age your weight your size whatever what's what's a healthy intake of carbs because that's a very delicate issue with dealing with different health issues so what's good food is not good for you and what's good that you don't think is good food is good for you if that makes any sense anyway <laughs> So basically, the tasty stuff is bad. The tasty stuff is bad, man. And and the stuff that why you it really... Why has got to be that way? I don't know though. why it's got to be like that. I, I just don't understand. You, there's only so many ways you can eat chicken breast or, you know, or eat steamed steam vegetables or salads or, you know what I'm saying? It just, it's it's hard to eat, you know. But the, the easiest way is if you like to eat like a, a hamburger, just take the top bun off. Uh, you like to eat french fries. You know, eat six. You know, get the taste of the ketchup and the, get the fries. And, you know, you still get the, the flavor. You like a milkshake, only drink a quarter of it. You know what I'm saying? And it's kind of a waste of food. But I still eat, we still eat pizza and spaghetti and stuff like that. You know, it's, it's good for you. Okay. How many different countries have you been to? And what was your favorite atmosphere, your favorite food from the other countries, and the favorite culture that you've seen? I, I have... How many, well, he'll start. How many, how many different, different countries, countries have you been to? The Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, uh, Guatemala, El Salvador, Costa Rica, uh, Belize, um, Honduras. Did I say Guatemala? I think so. Uh, okay. Uh, Ecuador, Bolivia, Argentina. Um, I believe that's it. That's it. Okay, so what was your favorite atmosphere, food, and culture? In Mexico. I have to say Mexico. Mexico was the, was your favorite? the best. That was that was the best. The, the best um, Cancun. You can't beat Cancun. You can't beat Cancun. Nothing can beat Cancun. Beautiful waters. Great food. Maybe it's awesome. We'll go. Maybe I'll I'm going to take you. I'm going to take you. I already made a promise to you. I'm going to take you. Okay. Um, where did your inspiration to be a musician slash producer come from? Um, the inspiration to become a musician came from my dad, um, and to be a music producer, uh, came from the 
frustration of getting shut down and always beat up by the other bands. So I took it upon myself. Dad told me one day, well, instead of depending on others for songs and stuff, why don't you write the songs yourself? And so I started writing, and thanks to you guys, they became hits, and I continue to do it today, and and that's what I do. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. What or who inspired you to start your own band? What inspired me to start my own band? Um, the old ladies at Luby's. The old ladies at <laughs> Luby's. Uh, here in our mall, the Luby's is not in the mall anymore, but it used to be part of the mall. I was coming out of Luby's. And um, it was shortly after Selena had passed. And uh, these two old ladies in Spanish, they told me, you know, what have you been doing with yourself? You know, and I said, I, at that time, I was just basically working in my private studio and not making any music for people to listen to. And they basically told me, uh, you know, you guys started a dream together and it'd be nice and you know, for you to continue your family dream, you know, and that's what your sister would have wanted you to do, mm -hmm. don't you think? And after leaving them, I thought about it, and I said, you know what, we we actually had talked about that one time, um, if one of us had passed, for us to continue, you know, to go on, to continue, when we felt it was the right time, so I waited a couple of years or so, and uh, so yeah, took some, you did Cumbia Kings in 99. Yeah, I did Cumbia Kings uh, shortly after, and... Uh, and, you know, the rest is history, you know, but uh, basically I'm very grateful, very grateful to the two old ladies that made the suggestion because it might have not been for them. I probably wouldn't have even thought about when I came back. Everybody thought I was crazy. Everybody thought I was crazy. They said, you're going to have to start at the bottom. And a lot of people don't know that we actually, well, I mean, I was playing at the Astrodome with Selena for 60 something thousand people. And then I'm starting with this baby group again with the Cumbia Kings where uh, nobody's. And we're playing outside of the Astrodome in the beer gardens for like not even 200 people. And I'm looking at the Astrodome and I'm saying, man, I told the guys that day, I said, I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to get us back in there again, man. One way or another, I promise you, you know, we'll get back in that. I'll get us in that Astrodome. And I kept my promise and we actually broke two records ourselves, the Cumbia Kings. So it's super cool. Awesome. Okay. When you're not on the road... What are some of the things you like to do in your free time? Absolutely nothing, believe it or not. I like to hang out with you. Aww, I love to hang out with you. That's that's love. that's what I love to do. I don't I never get tired of hanging out with you. You don't I get on my nerves. Any. You never you never get on my nerves. Only sometimes I do. And that's and that, that, that's that's me though. That's that's more me. That but you you don't. I mean, but I can be a pain in the butt. Sometimes. You 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 we can all be pains in the butt. <laughs> ah stop. <laughs> yes, okay. That I uh Okay, stop. Mm -hmm. oh, I love you too. Okay, what's your favorite song right now? <laughs> You're gonna laugh, man. I don't want to like the song, but I keep hearing it in my head. It's Shake It Off, man. <laughs> I was gonna say, are you thinking Taylor Swift? Yeah, I'm thinking Taylor Swift, man. How does she do that? I mean, geez. I mean, she writes some mega, mega hits, man. Congrats to Taylor, man. You, you want to just not like the song and you just... Start singing Shake It Off, man. You know what I'm saying? Shake it off. Shake it shake off. It off. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Or whatever. Yeah. I don't know all the words, but I just think it's, you know, except until she starts rapping. That part, uh, I don't know. My ex-man brought his new girlfriend. She was like, oh my God. Yeah. I'm just going to shake. You should have been listening to this sick beat. No. <laughs> I still listen to it. Right? <laughs> Okie dokie. What's your next tattoo? After all the surgeries, man, that's mm -hmm. the last thing I want to start doing is poking my... You keep you. saying that, but then you're like, man, I need to go and visit, and then I need to... My my next tattoo, I told you what it was going to be. You haven't told them. They want it. Okay, I've told you. My next tattoo is going to be one of you and our baby we have together. And I'm going to have Kat Von D do it. Hopefully. Hopefully. I just picked her. I just got oh, oh, the same because her shop burned down. That's right. Yeah. We're sorry, cat. That happened. Sorry, cat. Sorry, cat. I hope you get all your stuff back. You know, but I'm glad. No, I hope nobody was hurt. That's that's the yeah, most I important know. thing. Cause nobody was hurt. I know. Okay. So, as kids, did you and your sisters ride bikes or rollerblade? We rode bikes. I skateboarded. I skateboarded. I roller skated. At least until recently. 
I took Ricky roller skating. I said, man, I used we to, went roll- to the, We went to the I, skating I, rink. I could... He I was could. so confident in himself. I'm like, look, you haven't gotten on, like, roller skates or roller blades in, like, I can how many blade. years? Like, I can roller don't blade. go out there all confident. Like, take it slow. Nope. He put his roller... He put the roller skates on and, like, took off and poof. Got up. I got it. I'm okay. I'm okay. Up. Uh, poof. He fell. Like, I, felt, I don't know I felt how five, many I felt times. five times. And he was like, let's go. We're these, little, home. these little kids. We were they, there for like 30, 45, these, 45 minutes at the most. And he was like, let's go. And then they turned, they turned off the lights. And they had these glow sticks yeah, and stuff. Yeah, and they're like all and, and they're, skating they're skating around me. And, and they got and, like the little glow things. And, I, and I'm, I'm freaking out, man, because my, I... I I used to could roller skate backwards and but stuff. How long ago was it, that? It was, you haven't done it I know. Forever. I keep thinking that it was like yesterday, but it wasn't. Ask me how many times did I fall? How many times did you fall? Zero. Okay. You're, you know how to roller skate. No, I'm, I'm not saying I knew how. It's just... Then what are you trying I mean, to say? I mean, I hadn't roller skated in... I was probably like in fourth grade the last time I roller skated. But I went out there knowing Dude. it had been forever, I, I mean, so I, I didn't go out there all I, confident. I, I, I went out there and I was like slowly trying to get my groove back, and I was like, "All right, I got I, it. I used to roller, I'm back now. I used to rollerblade all the time with my son Savani. We would always rollerblade. You but can how ask how long it, I, ago was that? Honey? No, I, I I couldn't have been. It couldn't have been. How, okay, how old was Savani? Savani was already like eight or nine years old. Okay, baby, he's how old now? Twenty, gonna be twenty four. Exactly. Okay, so, so. I was a, but I still was <laughs> badass at rollerblading too, man. Okay. Okie dokie. Somebody wants to know who cuts your beard. Who? Cuts? It, was, it, was, it was it was a guy that asked this. So I guess he I guess he admires your beard, but he wants to know who, who cuts, cuts your beard. Who cuts my beard? Uh, and you can see I'm letting the silvers come in. Yeah, I'm letting those silvers come in. Uh, who cuts? I don't know what it is. They, I, I, I thought it was just Ricky says. I, I think that silver hairs are sexy, and then, you know. When I put a picture of you on my Instagram, a lot no, of girls were like, "Oh my god, I love his silvers coming no, no, in." No, no, that, like, that's right. I yeah, told that, you. that's the thing is, is that I didn't know that girls were, you know, like that kind of thing. But for you guys out there that are dying your beards or trying to, you know, he used to dye his beard. You know, I used to dye my beard, and and then I just said, you know. I started letting the silver. Ricky said uh, the silvers are sexy, man. Silver is sexy. So, I thought it was just Ricky, but actually, actually, they took a poll also that ninety percent of women find guys that you know take their their hair bald off. Heads. That you know what I'm saying? Bald ha- have the bald head. They actually ninety percent of the women find that more sexier. So, for all you guys out there, you know, trying to land you a honey, let the silver show and take their hair off, man. And let your silvers grow. Let the silver show and glow. Oh, yeah. Do you plan on expanding the family? Yes, we do on plan. We do plan on expanding the family. Uh, We've talked about this many times. And yes, we do plan on expanding the family. We'll let you, we're not exactly we're for not, sure we're not when for, we're for going sure when to, we're still enjoying our us we're, time. We're enjoying it too much. It's It's just... You know, with you being on the road too, like taking a baby... Because I like going with him. Of course, I could always stay home, but I like going with him. I like being with him. I love her being with me, too. It's 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 a good thing. Couples couples should um, spend as much time. If you, if you don't, if you have to get away and have, you know, oh, I need guys night out. We need girls out. You know, when it gets too much of that, I, I believe, you know. When you feel like you need a break from your significant other, that's not a good that's sign. That's not a good sign, man. You sh- your, your significant other should be your camarada. Yeah, it's your, supposed to be your best your friend. friend. Don't you want to spend your time with your best friend? Yeah. So if you feel like you need to spend time away from your significant other, that's not, not very good. cool. Not good. And so we like being together. It's and... cool. But expand yeah. expansion, yes, soon. We'll let you know. But we don't want to do be one of those couples. We're we're working on it. We're trying. That's gross. Oh. Gross. Gross. Okay. <laughs> How did you feel the very first time you stepped on stage in front of a crowd? Do you remember? Damn, our first state, our first crowds were not there. There wasn't even stages, man. They were just corners, you know. Set okay, up, set well, up. how did you feel? How did I feel? The very first time you actually had like a crowd that wasn't your family. We oh, this is how it started. <laughs> this is how it started. I don't think I've even shared this. Okay, with you. the very first restaurant that you guys played at, dude. I it didn't even start like that, man. It started at we would go like all the way to Washington State and visit our relatives, and my dad would bring all the equipment with us. And he would say, Amy, we're going to play a song for our relatives. 
some songs, go get the equipment. So there I am unloading Susie's drum set, speakers, whatever, bass amp, bass guitars, my dad's guitar, and then set it up, get it all plugged up, and then, you know what I'm saying? Then the electricity would flow into the equipment, and then feelings somewhere over the rainbow. You know, I'm in the mood okay, well, for love. How did love. you feel? How did you feel the very Simple. first time you had to perform in front of a crowd? I didn't understand music or the beauty of the lyrics or what Dad was trying to show us. But now I listen to Somewhere Over the Rainbow and it just makes me want to cry. It's such a beautiful song. Okay, man. but how did you feel the very first time you had to step in front of a crowd and play? Were you like nervous nah. or were you excited about pissed it? Pissed off. Were you <laughs> You're pissed. pissed. Yeah, look at Suzette too. She didn't look happy. She looked pissed off half the time too. Like she didn't want to. She's like sitting on the drums in the back, and I'm actually at one party. There's there's, there's one video that we were laughing at him. He's like sitting had. on the speaker and he's like playing with his head down, like he's pissed off, and he's like, "I'm serious. It, it just we were playing for a family reunion. You know what I'm saying? I've been playing the same songs. We're boring everybody out of their minds. You know, it's not that they weren't great songs. It's just that people when they hear music, they want to dance. You know, they don't want to." Listen to slow songs, but that's all our repertoire was, was slow songs. You know what I'm saying? One song. I think the upbeat song that we knew, and this is a Chris Pettis favorite, because he, it, a lot of people don't know this about Chris Pettis, is Freddie Fender is like everything to Chris Pettis. And we used to do Wasted Days and Wasted Nights. Wasted Days and Wasted Nights. Ooh, I did excuse me. Mm. I said excuse me. Yeah, I know. But anyway, so the feeling... I, I would say frustration, man. I, I can't say that there was ner time for nervousness. It was like, oh, man, I, I don't have to take the equipment off again. Oh, I still had to be a roadie, man. Oh, that was so frustrating, being a roadie. I was a roadie for a long time. Okay. What's the most annoying question people ask you? Where do I start? Okay, well, it's one of the most annoying questions. When they ask about the bus, if that's Bertha, you know. Let it out. Tell them now. Don't ask. You know what Bertha I'm saying? Bertha got chopped into pieces Bertha, a long time ago. A long time. But even at that, okay, let's do the math, okay? So this year is going to be 20 years. At some, we're coming on 20 years. Okay, at so y'all got the bus, bus in the late 80s, maybe? Late 80s, say? yeah. So add that. And it was already old at the time. It was already a, a 70 something model, at least, or a 60 model uh, bus, a, a Silver Eagle. So it was an old bus. So there's no way that a bus could be on the road for 40 years, man. That's that's not practical, man. So that question and and just in general, when I post up a picture of you know of something and I want to share it with you, and it's like that little that video they got of that kid where they ask him, "How'd you like the Halloween?" or "What'd you do?" and he goes, "I like turtles." I like turtles. That's how I feel. I'm dealing with people. Like I'm not asking you that. I'm sharing with you a picture, you know, and it always ends up on something else, but. I guess the bus thing is the main thing. But what a lot of people don't know is before Selena passed, we had a new bus. We had a new bus. It was so a, Bertha was already so gone. So Bertha was already when she passed, Bertha when was Selena, already gone. When Selena passed, we were no longer traveling in Bertha anymore. My dad went to Canada. It was the rock group Rush. They owned the Silver Eagle that they were selling. And it was a newer model. And we were super hyped. I mean, because Bertha, I mean, she, I like Bertha was, she was awesome, man, for... She got the job done. She got us from point A to point B. But it just, you know, Bertha just, we did it. Rasa, we did it. Rasa we did it. Rasa style. We did it like most of the cars you see in the in the hood, in the body of the hoopties. You see them. They got the primer. They got the brand new bumpers and the brand new rims. But they never have a paint job. And that was poor Bertha. She she. She had the nice accessories. She had the nice accessories. But she didn't have a she never dress had a paint on. job. And this new bus that Dad has. He bought this a while back, and, and it's maroon, but for people that really know anything about the movie, you know what I'm saying, it it, it never got painted. So this the, the style of the bus, the old bus is the Silver Eagle. This is a Prevo. So there's a difference. So you know what I'm saying? Ed, educate yourself. And I'll even put, it's not Bertha on my post, and people still put, is that, is that Bertha? Big Bertha? You know, come on. People, read the post carefully before you, you comment. Just do me that, because that drives me crazy, man, honestly. Just saying. What's one of your biggest fears? I guess when you get my age is be due to people that you've seen pass on that you love. You know what I'm saying? And knowing that some of the people that are older than you, you know, due to the fact that they're getting older, you know, 
you want them to be here longer, but you know the fact of the matter is is that everything, you know, is time, you know. So, I mean, we can hope to live to be 100 or hope to be to live to be 90 years old or so, you know. But the fact of the matter is is that we have so, so age. you'd say losing your loved losing ones? Losing your losing loved ones, yeah. Losing my loved ones. I worry about that with you. You know what I'm saying? Losing you, losing just any, anybody that I, I love, losing them in general, it, it just that I can't conceive that thought right now. You know, yeah. it, it's hard for me to deal with right now. Yeah. All right. How many songs would you say that you've written or produced like overall your entire life? If you could sit down and go, probably this many, how many would you say? How many songs? Including have... like all the other artists that you've written for. Man, all I could, songs. I couldn't. I couldn't. Life. I couldn't put to pen. So like a thousand. I don't think it'd be a thousand. Not quite. No, not quite. A I few hundred. Written... No, it'd be more than a few hundred. It'd be more than a few hundred. Well, like how many? Three, four, five hundred. You'd have to count albums. I'm saying albums. Albums, the songs, amount of songs albums, produced. Your albums, yeah, produced. All the other artists. That other you've artists for. that I've written for. It's 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 a good amount. I mean, it's other a, people's albums. It's you've a good written yeah. For. It's a good amount of of songs, but not a thousand. I wouldn't say it's a thousand. You know what I'm saying? Not a thousand. How many hundreds would you say? About 500? Maybe close to 500. It might be close to 500. It's a lot of songs. I know. It's been... And it's about to be more songs. <laughs> okay. What's your favorite food? My favorite food... Man, right now I'd have to say Panda Express. That's, we eat a lot of Panda. We eat Panda Express. I don't There's know. one like five minutes from my house. Yeah. I think they're only open because we eat there every other day. I, I, I We used keep to, that place open. I, okay, what are your kids' names? My kids' names are oldest to youngest. I'd have to start with Martika, Savani. Then we go to Gianni. Mm -hmm. Little Abraham, who's named after my, my dad. He, but they call him A.B. anyway. And uh, Jay... Elijah, uh, Elijah, J. Elijah J. Madison. Your stepdaughter. With my stepdaughter Madison. El Rey. I named him after the song El Rey. And then Justin. Named him after Justin Timberlake. That was not my choice. But I still love Justin. I thought anyway. it was. No, it wasn't my choice. But I, that's I'm um, cool with it. I'm cool with it because Justin's cool. So that's awesome. Okay. Favorite ice cream flavor? I don't have a favorite ice cream flavor. Really? I, I'm not. I'm more of a yogurt. A frozen yogurt. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you know what? I could say a favorite ice cream rocky road a rocky road rocky road <laughs> okay they had asked are Woo! you a they well this person actually asked like a two part they said do you like cats or dogs but then they put what's your favorite pet what's my favorite pet man i i love all animals man um are you a cat or a dog person i would have to say more of a dog person but if i didn't have allergies towards cat i would love to have a cat I know you don't like cats, but I love cats. They're, they're, they're cool. Some cats are cool. Some I cats... like them when they're kittens. Once they get older, I'm just yeah. kind of like, uh, go away and get away from me. Yeah. <laughs> they're cute when they're little, though. Yeah. But dogs, I'm, just, I'm a big dog person. I'm a sucker for puppies. Oh uh, we love dogs. We love dogs. Okay, would you prefer coffee or energy drinks? Uh, neither one. You like frappuccinos. Yeah, but I don't need... Uh, okay, I like caramel frappuccinos uh, from Starbucks. Okay, is there anywhere in the world that you have not been but you want to go? Yes. Where? To Japan. Is that it? I want to go to Tokyo. That's the only place. That's, that's... You don't want to go like France or Italy or London or Australia or... I'd like to go to Aspen, but I heard the French are stuck up. <laughs> I want to go where the, where the beer... Where is there where the wine flows like... Where the beer flows like wine... <laughs> That Rocky, that, that John Denver's that John full of, Denver's Denver's full of, full of <laughs> <laughs> Would you play at Daryl's house if you're invited from um, the Hall and Oates guy? And they said, if if you would uh, take up the invite, uh, what song would you want to jam with him? Is that show even still on? I don't. Are they still? Da uh, Daryl. The Daryl's house. Yes, Daryl's house. house. Would you go if you got invited? Yes, I would go. Who? I'd be crazy not to go. The, the, what the, song would you want to play with him? I'd want to jam whatever song he wanted to jam. Something just old school R and B. You know what I'm saying? Something smooth. Something, something soulful. That's what I would want to jam with him. Okay. This next girl said. I remember reading the question. I remember her little story. She had said that 
She was from Canada, so the white girl. Never knew Spanish, never knew anything like that, but she fell in love with your music that you wrote. And so she was saying, how does it feel to know that your music has inspired people to learn Spanish? Um, I think it's great, but to be honest with you, I, I believe us as artists and, and producers and writers, when we write stuff, it, it it's just an extension of ourselves. You know what I'm saying? Of what comes from our mind, from our heart, our feelings. But then it's up to you guys, the, the, the people, you know what I'm saying, to fall in love with the songs and you guys make them your, your own. Cause once I make them, I mean, it's not like I sit around in the car listening to my own songs. You know what I'm saying? I make the album. Once the album's made, I listen to it two or three times, maybe five, six times, make sure it's mastered right, made right for you guys. And once I make it, I chuck it behind me, you know, work on the promotion of the album or whatever, and then watch you guys enjoy it, you know? And it's cool to see all the Zumba classes and people Zumba. It's good to know that I, that A.B. Quintanilla is part of the Zumba. Yeah, baby. It's, that's, it's a good thing, Zumba. Okay. Somebody asked, what kind of things are on your rider? Like when you have shows or something, like what kind of things are a must that you have to have in the back? Dad, since the beginning, we never asked for anything because obviously somebody's paying for that. We never asked for anything. We're just grateful that they get, the other day they at a casino, man, they brought sandwich stuff, but they didn't bring the, the bread. You didn't know about that. You were asleep. You weren't feeling very good. You were mm -hmm. feeling sick because of the high altitude. It wasn't hitting oh, you too Oh, it was the good. day that you brought me the sandwich. I, I made a sandwich for her. Uh, but the thing is, is that they didn't bring any bread. But I was just grateful just to have some sandwich and a chip, the sandwich and some chips, man. You know what I'm saying? That I think everybody should be grateful and stop being ingrates, man. Are there any songs you regret doing? <laughs> tons. <laughs> uh, tons. <laughs> There's tons of songs. Everybody has, like, I should have put this in that part of the song. And you just... There are things, you're always going to be your worst critic. I'm my worst critic. Or where people see, you know, wow, that song's amazing. I go, man, I, I really sucked on that song. It wasn't it wasn't really good. And, that, and I think the day that you're satisfied with yourself and you really start patting yourself on the back is the day that you start, you stop striving to be better and to be, bring better product to the public. Or You know what I'm saying? So I believe that that's very important that. For me, I yeah, there there are things that I regret, but that's all part of the learning process, not to do that again on the next album. What type of bass is your favorite? I have to stay right now, as of right now, my favorite bass has been uh, Spectre from Stuart Spectre out of uh, Woodstock, New York. They're handmade um, in a shop with six guys. And Stuart makes them for me personally. I want to send a shout out to Stuart and PJ from Stuart, uh, uh, Stuart Spectre, Spectre Basses. And they, they're handmade basses, and they're just, nothing sounds like them, man. They're, they're just amazing sounding basses. Uh, but I actually have another friend from May, uh, May Basses, uh, Sean, who's making me an amazing bass right now. And um, it's the first one, you know, and he personalized it for me and stuff. And so I'm really excited about it. So I'll have two new basses I'll be taking on tour this year. Cool. Okay, if you weren't a musician, what other career path would you have chosen? I'd be a barber. Okay. Which tattoo hurt the most? You're not going to believe which one hurt the most. Everybody, I have tattoos on my rib cage, uh, underneath the arm, everywhere. And the one that hurt the most is I, I have some little skeletons having a party going around my ankle. And I got to say, that was the most painful, most painful part. So to, painful you didn't even finish it. I, I didn't even finish it. I didn't even finish. It's it's missing all the shadowing and stuff. I just I I I bet he did one because it's the skeletons are dancing. They have maracas. They have a weed eye. They have liquor bottles. They're partying around my that, my ankle, and one has a couple of guns. He's shooting a couple of guns up in the air like you know they're having a party, old school style. And uh, he did one the one in the front of my ankle, and I just told him to stop. And he said, "You're gonna look stupid with just one skeleton just right in the front." I said, "I don't care." He goes, just let me work on the next one. So he kept working, and I don't know. There's maybe about 10 skeletons. I've never counted. It's kind of like between your ankle and the bottom of your calf. Yeah, between. It's the, not really the ankle. It's like it's mid. It's not the ankle. It's mid-ankle. Yeah, that was painful. Don't do it. So Ani learned the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what do you want your legacy to be? I just want for, for, for people to respect each other. You know what I'm saying? For musicians to respect each other and, and to give props like I did with Taylor Swift. I mean, I'm not a big fan, 
But I have to admit, I love the song. You know what I'm saying? So that's giving respect. You know, you, you can think what you think, but it's like, think what you think about me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But it's really not about me. It's about the music. You know, I'm, I'm just here. I make the music, but at the end of the day, the legacy is what I want is to be the music. That's what I want it to be. Okay. How and I was awesome. That's it. <laughs> Okay, how does your family feel about your boxing, and have you ever gotten really hurt from it? Um, how does my family feel about my boxing? My mom uh, doesn't like it, because um, she's like any other mom. They don't want you to get hurt. My dad uh, doesn't like it because he worries about me uh, hurting my hands. Uh, and you always... I mean, the way I look at life is you, you can hurt, hurt yourself lifting weights. You can hurt yourself getting into the tub. You can hurt yourself anywhere, man. It's just, it, you know, you just have to be very careful, you know. And, and for me, have I ever been hurt boxing? Uh, no. Nah. Embarrassment, yeah. Many times. <laughs> you hurt your ego. It's hurt my, no, it, it's not even your ego. It's, it, it's, it's like your manhood is hurt, you know what I'm saying? Because boxing is not the same as like, in fighting, I went undefeated at school. Like, I mean, that after school fighting, okay, everything goes in, in after school fighting. But in boxing, it's a, it's a different world, man. I mean, you don't cock back way back from over here. All punches come from the chin. They come from right here. All power comes short, short jab. Everything comes from from here. You, so you have to learn a totally different technique. You have to learn not to get mad. The minute you get mad and you start fighting angrily, you start getting sloppy and you get stupid and you, got, you get knocked out. And I've seen – that's the coolest thing about going to the gym is I see a lot of guys, guys get knocked out. I'm glad I've been knocked down but never knocked out. That's cool. Okay. Do you do concerts for nonprofit organizations? Yes, we do. I am an ambassador for St. Jude Hospital, and I'd like to send a shout out to my boy, John Ortiz, who's in charge of the Latin area, and we had the honors of going to Memphis to perform. Who did you perform for? We performed for all the radio programmers from across the country, because John brought everybody together, so that way they would spread the word of what the hospital does. They treat uh, cancer children for free. And they, they actually house the parents also. So the kids are staying there for six months. And the parents, they stay free. They eat free. They, all expenses are paid. And, and we want to thank Target because Target is a, a huge, huge supporter. of. Uh, they have Target House, uh, St. Jude Target House. And they, they're just like, they give them lots and lots of money to, uh, to make kids better. And that's, I think that's awesome. I thought I was going to be excited about going to Graceland uh, to see the King's stuff. But the excitement really was visiting the hospital with the kids to see all those smiling faces. And they're happy to see you. And they're from Guatemala. They're from El Salvador. They're from, you know, Mexico. They're from different parts of Latin America. And it's beautiful. And, and I, I sang for them. I don't even sing. And they were just kept telling me in Spanish, sing a song for us, sing a song for us. I don't sing. But I sang a song for them. Anything for the kids, man. Anything to put a smile on their face. Yeah. Yay. Okay. How much weight have you lost in total? Uh, 50 pounds. Or almost 50. Almost 50. It fluctuates. Before he started boxing, before he started working out yeah. and stuff, he was pushing 200. I was pushing 200. And right now I'm at, I fluctuate between 157 and 159. It's uh, kind of more almost 40 pounds. Yeah. That's a little more than 40. I not dropped, quite 50, but I dropped down a few to more one, than 40. Well, I dropped down to 140 at one point. That was uh, because you were. Well, I didn't want to drop was, down. <laughs> that was from after. Yeah, that. a lot of people were saying so. Oh, man, he looks like he's smoking crack. And no, I went through a surgery and I, I couldn't eat, man. I just, it just was horrible. The pain was just too much to be thinking about eating, but I'm somewhere different now, so I'm good. Okay, what's your favorite movie? You you made me a fan of Superbad, man. And we quote lines from, I try to quote lines from Superbad. Ricky's got He's, it down. He has a horrible memory. I have a horrible memory. The worst memory I ever. I can't even sing songs right, dude. But I can I can watch Superbad over and over. Nacho Libre, I can watch over and over. Four Brothers, I can watch over and over. There's various movies. Okie dokie. What song is closest to your heart? Any song that you've either heard or played yourself? I, I would have to say the song that we we danced to at our wedding was oh. is, is uh, by um, Brian, Adams. Brian Adams, When You Love a Woman. And the crazy thing about it is, is I didn't know that that song was part of the Don Juan DeMarco soundtrack where Selena came out with Johnny Depp and Marlon Brando in the movie. I didn't know that that was actually part of that soundtrack or that movie. I never knew that. But I love the words of it because, you know, 
when you love a woman, you know what I'm saying? You know when you love a woman, the, the, the words are just, it just, it's a beautiful song, man. It's an amazing song. And uh, it just, it reminds me of, you know, all the beautiful things, you know what I'm saying? Oh, my love. <laughs> and I saw the Roger Rabbit thing you put today. I'm not Roger Rabbit. You're not, you look like Jessica Rabbit, a lot of people say. Yeah, a lot of people say you look like Jessica Rabbit. Mm. Okay, I'm not Roger Rabbit. But you I do make you laugh. Be, you make you actually be. you make me laugh more than I make you laugh. You make me laugh a lot. That's why I'm with you. What? Okay, what was your favorite dish that your mom made when you were growing up? And she made some strange dishes. <laughs> um, How about your Chihuahua dogs? Chihuahua dogs. Yes, I know some of y'all have ate them before. Is where you get um, a, hot dog. a hot dog wiener, you said a wiener. And, and you get a corn tortilla and you soften the tortilla like an enchilada. You're going to soften for an enchilada and, and grease or oil or whatever, blah, blah, blah. And then you wrap it around the wiener with some cheese inside of it. Then you put a toothpick through it and then you deep fat fry it for a little bit until you can get them. I like them not crunchy. I like them medium. You can get kinda them real kind of. I don't like them crispy. I like them just, you know what I'm saying? Just... In between. And so I like that with macaroni and cheese. That's really, really good. How long ago was your first tattoo? I got a tattoo maybe about six months after Selena passed. Which one was it? What I, was I it? covered it up. Oh, yeah. Well, what happened is is, is that there was, there was only a Selena logo, but there was really not one with like a flower going through it. So I had an artist draw one. And I put it on my arm on this side over here, and it was real little, man. I, I don't know why. I, I should have made it, like, big, you know what I'm saying? And I made it too little. And it was crooked. It was just a horrible tattoo that I got when I was a little tipsy. And um, it was not a cool – it was it – was, the intentions were good. And, I mean, obviously, I moved to this arm, and I made this Selena big like it should have been, you know what I'm saying, as mm -hmm. y'all can see. And, uh, you know, I was able to elaborate and put the CDs and the Grammy and other things. You know what I'm saying? So just when you're going to make a, t a tattoo, don't get little things. You get little things, it's really, really hard to... Unless build. you're a girl. Unless you're a girl and you just want to get one tattoo. But if you're a guy, don't go with a little bitty tattoo. So that was Lesson my, learned. Lesson learned. Another one. Okay. Somebody wants to know, are your knees feeling better? Are my knees feeling better? Yeah, believe it or not. Um... It's it's been really hard. It's been hard, and it's been it, it. What really I have to say something about this because I know it, it's it's very insensitive, but you know people made comments like "run, Forrest, run," you know, and it's not nice to do that because you around. know it, it, yeah. But even playing around, I, I I can't do that. Maybe I would have been one of those persons that did that, but after what I went through with the, the legs and not being able to walk, I'll never. You know, I look you at. You know the actual yeah, pain. Yeah, I know what it. the pain is, and I know what the person that's wearing those braces, what they, the the, you, the limited amount of movement, and what. Now what that you, you know what you went yeah. through, you kind of see okay, yeah. it's not that. Funny. Yeah, it's not. But right now, I, I'm I'm awesome. I'm going to the gym every other day to to. to li I finally got the okay to lift weights with my legs. So now I'm lifting weights and getting stronger, you know, and building muscle on my legs. So you your muscle totally just disintegrates. You know, when you're laying in bed uh, and not able to move your legs, you know, you, you lose all muscle tone. So I'm super happy. I'm, I'm blessed. I, I, I can't complain. Uh, my, my knees are the least of my problems right now. Good. Okay. Do you plan on writing a book? Yes, I do I plan on writing a book. Okay. If you could rid the world of one thing, what would it be? I would say uh, sickness. Just like all... All sicknesses, yeah. all diseases, all diseases, gone. That's all diseases. How do you balance musician and home life? There's really no separation. I mean, you've seen it. I mean, I'm constantly on the grind, constantly trying to find the angles uh, in this business because it just things are just crazy right now in the music business. I mean, for all you that ask, why is Ricky always driving? It's because I'm constantly, if an idea, I'll, I'll space out. Like if I'm driving... And I start thinking about a melody or a song, I, 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 it's easy for me to get distracted. What's your favorite Mexican dish? I would have to say are tacos de ribeye, tacos de tinga, tinga de pollo, which is not available everywhere. But I would say anything Mexican, anything Mexican is good. All Mexican food is good. 
I just don't like going to a Mexican restaurant and not being spoken into in Spanish. That bothers me. I like, and I don't like listening to salsa music in a Mexican restaurant. I like to hear mariachi music, you know, whatever Mexicano music is, you know what I'm saying? So just saying. Just saying, guys. Okay. Do you watch novellas? I just realized I do watch novellas. <laughs> so Ricky tells me, you know, you should watch Pretty Little Liars. Maybe you'll like it. And you know what? I liked it. Say something. Say something. I like Pretty Little Liars. It's a great show, but I just realized it's a novella. <laughs> it's pretty a, much. It, it's a novella. I started watching Weeds. It's a novella. They're all novellas, man. They're just a different way of, of making novellas. Watch oh, I used to watch All My Children. I got sucked into All My Children for about three years, man. That's weird, right? Yeah. You know okay. Uh, are there any tattoos that you regret? Yes. <laughs> yes. Where do I start? <laughs> it was supposed to be a girl wearing a wife beater, wearing a charro hat, and she was supposed to be crying, you know, sad. And unfortunately, the tattoo artist who did it, I invited him to my house to come do the tattoo, and I started drinking with him. And when I woke up in the morning, I had a girl with no wife beater on, no charro hat, no tears. She looked like she smoked like two or three blunts. Just, if you see the tattoo, it just, it just, but everybody has to have one of those, man. One of those bad tattoos. That's like a, a bragging right to leave it there. Don't try to cover it up. Leave it there. You know what I'm saying? Leave the tattoo there. Okay. Who's your favorite actor or actress? My favorite actor would have to be Robert Downey Jr. And the reason why is because the guy was in court every other day. For like a year or so, or three years or four years, he was always getting in trouble. And then all of a sudden, boom, he's an A-list celebrity now. He's Iron Man. He's Iron Man, man. He's Nobody Iron else man. can be Iron Man. When you're that good at your part. Nobody else could play Nobody could play Iron you? Man. Spider-Man, I'm sorry, he got replaced. I didn't like... Uh, Batman's been Batman's how many been different played by actors? I don't know many guys. Iron Spider-Man's now. We got two Spider-Man. Robert. Iron Man, that can never be Robert, we salute man. you. We salute you. You're... you're, you're Joe Wayne. We salute you. She salutes that way. I don't. That's a different talk. That's some different lingo right there. I salute you. From homie to homie, man. You know what I'm saying? I think he's I think he's an amazing actor. Okay. Somebody wants to know, what was your favorite cereal? We didn't have choices in cereal when I was growing well, up. You can pick one from like today, too. Either childhood or today. Just childhood? What do you remember from your entire life? Do you remember? You want to know the truth. Are the people ready to know the truth of what I remember about cereals? Is that my dad would buy Raisin Bran. Okay, do you know what Raisin Bran does to a 10-year-old stomach? Huh? Second period, every day I was cramping. I didn't know why for like six months. I couldn't figure out that it was the cereal. Nobody told me Raisin Bran does that to your stomach. It's good for cleaning out, but not for a 10-year-old kid, man, that goes to school. No. That's what I remember about cereal. Do I eat cereal now? No, I don't. Don't eat cereal. If I do, it'd be you, you tell people, granola. You always tell people the secret to staying young is eating cereal and watching cartoons, but you don't even eat cereal. I eat granola. It's no fun. You eat trash cereals, dude. Cereal's supposed to be fun. Huh? Cereal is supposed yeah, it, to be But they're fun. not supposed to be trash. You're not supposed it's to It's not. Start if your... you look on the box, it's like, oh, you get so many grams of this and so many grams of that. That's just... That's just... Bamboozling you, man. You're being well, bamboozled. Well, I fell for it. You did. You fell for the banana in the tailpipe. Okay. Somebody wants to know, will you ever be in a movie? Yes, I will. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I've already been in some movies, Fast and the Furious. but No, you. Song-wise, a lot of people don't know that. that the songs But will been... you? Yes. That's part of my plans, man. I'm taking you with me. We're taking Hollywood by storm, dude. Watch. Watch. <laughs> Watch. Yeah. Watch. Yeah. There's not enough pachucos out there, dude. Okay, what's yeah. your favorite color? Oops, sorry, uh, I didn't know you weren't done with the last one. I cut you no, off. No, no, you there. didn't cut me off. I'm, I was done. Okay, um, what's your favorite color? Your favorite color? Mm -hmm. Whatever you like. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, my favorite color, I'd say it's not even a color, I guess. It's black, man. Purple. Purple. I love purple. purple. I love purple. Purple is a beautiful color. Okay. Um, have you ever been starstruck by anybody? Yes, and I made a complete ass out of myself. Man. <laughs> I was starstruck 
with Brian McKnight. We played some awards together. He came into our dressing room, Brian McKnight himself, and I sang to him and I made an ass out of myself because I can't sing for crap. And I sang some of my favorite songs to him, letting him know how much I loved him, that I knew the words to his songs. The very few songs that I do know, I do know Brian McKnight songs. And that day I learned something very disturbing, that one of my favorite songs, uh, One Last Cry, I asked Brian, you know, did that really happen to you? And he said, no. I was like, man, the hurt in that song, you had to have. He goes, no. He goes, they're just bits and pieces of other songs that I like, man. I was like, okay, you just killed my turtle. You know what I'm saying? So it's all good. I still love you, Brian. Okay, what is your favorite snack? Apple juice and uh, with cashews. And one thing that I learned is two handfuls, two handfuls of cashews is equivalent to one Prozac for people that suffer from depression. That's amazing. So don't want to be depressed. Eat a lot of cashews. Okay. Somebody wants to know, will you ever write an all-English album? No, I'll never write an all-English album. There's just no no point in that. I stay true to my Latin roots, and I like it right where I'm at. Okay. How many different artists have you written for? We actually made a list one time. And we had, like, I, I don't know how many people on it. Written and produced. It's, it goes from, of course, Selena to Ricky Martin to, to John Cicada to Luis Enrique. I mean, Jose Feliciano. I mean, uh, Vico C. I work with Sheila E. It's just it, it, Roger from Roger and Zap. I mean, it just, I go across the board. It's just, I have, I'm really blessed. I've, I've had the honors of working with some really, really huge artists, man. And looking forward to working with, with a lot more in the future. What is your favorite TV show? They have to be the reality shows, man. It has to be the Kardashians. And I don't know why I watch them, man. Because they're funny. I don't, I, 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 I don't know why I watch them. I, I watch the Kardashians and, and I, I like watching the... The thing that bothers me about the Divas is, is WWE. Uh, the double divas is, is that they don't make enough episodes. They're always doing a lot of reruns. You know, they just never keep. Well, double divas is a different show. Double divas, I know, but I want it to be like the Kardashians, where every. No, I'm saying it. double divas is a different show. They're the booby girls that make big bras. Oh, I like them too. <laughs> They're cool, man. They're doing chicks that are big, 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 big in the front. You know, they're doing them a service, man. Well-endowed women. Well-endowed women. You know, that's. But the one you're talking about is total divas. Total divas. That's the one with the WWE girls. Yeah. I, That's total divas. You know, I just hope that John, Cena, and, and Nikki are okay. I worry about that all the time. You know how I worry about her. I worry that she's being okay. John, be good to, to Nikki, okay? She's a good woman. She just wants to have kids and get married, man. Come on. Just playing. Anyways. Well, that's it. it wraps up our questions that, that I have gathered. Up. Yeah. That Random Rick, questions. I want to thank Ricky for... Taking the time to scour through all the pages and look for the questions that were answerable, you know what I'm saying? And I want to thank all, questions. yeah, random questions. And I want to thank all you guys that that took the time to write in to ask the questions and Participate. and we're out. Let me cut this video. This segment brought to you by M&M's and Snickers. Hungry? Why wait? Hungry? Why wait? Oh, okay. I like caramel frappuccinos uh, from Starbucks. That's another plug. Is there any? <laughs> I'm I just got one, that. I'm hoping one of them, yeah. We did Snickers and we did M&M's. We did Snickers, M&M's, M's, Panda. Uh, Panda Express. You know what I'm saying? Just throwing it out there, guys. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> <clears throat> I know you want to go see Dumb and Dumber. Oh, uh, yeah. We're just saying Dumb and Dumber people. If y'all see this... Hey, throw a couple of checkers this way. You know what I'm saying? My ex-man brought his new girlfriend. She's like, oh my God. I'm just going to shake. And to the fella over there with the hell of long hair. I want to thank everybody who's been watching our videos. It's it's crazy because everywhere we go. They're like, y'all need to make more you videos. You need to make more you videos. You need to make a new one. I didn't, I didn't think, finally did. I didn't think people actually watch these things. You know, we're going to make we're gonna a, do a tattoo, tattoo video. video. Tattoo video. Coming soon. Okay.